Welcome back to Greyhound TV. I'm Wesley Krieger, alongside TJ Ryder, as we bring you Game 2 of the three-game series between Archbishop Spalding and the Gilman Greyhounds. Game 1 went to the Cavs after a brilliant pitching performance by Maryland commit Jake Yeager. The Hounds will be looking to change the narrative today. This year, Spalding is a very solid team. So far, they're 12-2. They have a 12-2 record while bolstering an impressive 8-0 record in conference play. The team is highlighted by great pitching, including starting pitcher Peyton Mamula, who is committed to West Virginia. Gilman so far this year has shown flashes of being a really good team and shown the potential that they truly have. Last week, they swept Mount St. Joe's and won over the weekend against St. Paul's in a convincing fashion. For the Greyhounds today, the lineup comes as follows. Uh, starting pitcher today is number 10, Jake Muller. Uh, batting second, Caleb Lawson playing center field. Batting third, number eight, Danny Likas playing catcher. Batting four, number nine, Wyatt Randolph, playing third base today. Batting fifth, sec, uh, <coughs> batting fifth, number two, Jude Taylor, playing shortstop. Batting sixth, number one, Toby Rosenband, playing right field. Batting seventh, number four, Krish Rangarajan, playing second base. Batting eighth, uh, Trey Heath, playing first base. And batting in the nine hole, number 14, Nadir Samuel, playing left field. Yeah, TJ, as we turn it over in the top of the first inning, we'll see Jake Muller throw his warm-ups. Jake showcases a low 80s fastball and good off-speed and breaking pitches. For the uh, Cavs, uh, their batting order goes as follows, with Braden Martin leading it off and playing shortstop at number one. Cruz Luna playing right field, number four, who uh, their coach, Coach Palumpo, said uh, was a key to this team and is leading the team in batting average with a 536 average. After Cruz comes Brennan Insko, who's playing second base, then Theo Lolan playing left field, Drew Emmerich playing first, Jack McNally catching, Carter Salazar at third, and DHing Carson Merritt, and in the nine hole, Sam Hoken at center field. As we see this game begin, Jake Moeller, Danny Likas behind the dish. Jake Moeller had a very impressive week. Pitched five innings of two hit ball against MSJ in his start. So he'll look to continue that. Yeah, that battery day. was both recognized by Exposure Sports as two of the studs of the week. As Jake Moeller misses inside, 1 0 the count. In those games, TJ Jake went five innings of two hit ball while going four for four from the plate with an RBI in game two of the series against MSJ. Another miss. Oh, that's going to be on the inside part of the corner there. Fastball from Moeller. Really pounding inside early today. Martin, the 1-1. One, one. Fastball outside. Grounded to first. Trey Heath takes it easy. Tossing one. it around early. It's always a good sign for the Hounds. One quick out. Just to continue with the Exposure Sports studs of the week from last week, Danny Likas went 7 for 10 from the plate with 5 RBIs and 2 runs versus MSJ. Looking to uh, keep up that hot series. Here comes Cruz Luna, the right fielder. First pitch from Moeller is going to miss high in the zone. Gilman pitchers do not really attack up in the zone, so we'll see if that was a mish piss or if they're switching up their game plan this year. Yeah, the coaching staff loves those low sinkers, tries to force ground balls. Pop straight back. That one's going to be on the football field. High bounce off the turf. 1-1 one, one here. More sets. Goalers the 1-1. One, one. Going to miss away. 2-1. Moller in the dirt. Going to move the count to three and one. Yeah, Jake Moller clearly being cautious around the two hitter. Doesn't want to give him anything up in the zone. That one is fouled back. Straight back right at you, Wes. <laughs> uh, too far to catch. I don't know if anyone from GTV has ever caught a foul ball. Could have been the first right there if it was a little more towards us. Willing to risk a risk a hand for a catch. 
As you see Jake Newberger, the backup catcher, collect that one. 3-2 the count. The payoff for Muller from the stretch. Up and in, walk to Cruz Luna. Tough battle there from Muller. Really gave it everything he had, but lost the fight in that one, but see him bounce back. Hopefully get a double play as the Hounds. Yeah, this spalling top of the order is loaded with every player in the top four, or, or every player in the top five, excuse me, hitting above 350. That's impressive, Wes. Spalding team is really, really doing something special this year. Yeah, ranked number two in the state behind DeMatha Catholic. Number one in the MIAA. The O from Muller there misses low in the dirt. Right on right here, Muller steps off. The Hounds love their pickoff moves, so we'll expect to see a lot more of those from, from all the pitchers, not just their starter Muller here. Yeah, they preach those all the way from winter workouts as we see the, the beam move there from Moeller. Steps off the back. Still 1-0 here against the three batter, Brandon Iosko. Moeller really gets to the plate quick. Doesn't want Luna to take the extra base. Gilman is has a reputation of really caring about those base runners and being good at holding runners and taking extra bases on offense. Slide step. That one's going to find the zone for Muller there. Yeah, low and away pitch. Really nothing you can do with that one. Great pitch there. Absolute pinpoint accuracy for Muller on that pitch. Under the count to 2-1. Another move from Muller over to first. Unlike the MLB, there's no third disengagement rule in high school baseball. Muller can go over there as much as he wants. Quick to the plate. That one is popped up. Right past the infield dirt. Drew Taylor's going to catch that one. Two down here early for the Hounds. Another lefty at the plate for the Cavs. Number nine, Theo Lolin. Cavaliers love their lefties early in the lineup, so we'll see if deeper into this game the Hounds go for a lefty-lefty approach with the top of the order. Good spot there by Moeller, right on the outside corner. First pitch strikes are going to be a key for Moeller, keeping the pitch down, keeping the pitch count down. Excuse me, trying to go deep into this game. Moeller's done a great job of not leaving anything over the middle of the plate thus far. He's thrown some balls, but he's also hit the corners really effectively. sets takes off the first again back in safe first base coach seems to be a little annoyed with the amount of times that Mauler's picking off saw him shrug his shoulders and well very aggressive lead over there by Luna so Mueller has to keep him honest he misses outside 1-1 one, one. the quick delivery of Mueller I think really limits the the base running potential of, of every team he faces, and he's super quick. Doesn't give him an opportunity to get a good jump. Great off-speed pitch there. A lot of late drop on that one, just swung over top of it and never really had a chance. Yeah, the left fielder was way over top that one in early. Moore's going to try to put him away. One of his three pitches. Takes off once again. Going to be in safely. TJ, I would guess that Jake Muller's pretty good at holding runners and pitching from the stretch. As unlike most pitchers, he does not throw from the windup with no runners on base. He's a purely a stretch guy. Sometimes that's a feel thing. That one up and away. Pitch out. Yeah, seemed like a pitch out there, Wes. And to your point, I think Jake Muller experimented with the, the windup last year, and he just wasn't as comfortable as he was out of the stretch, so decided to eliminate that all at, like totally and just go straight from the stretch. Yeah, back in my prime, I was purely a stretch guy. Just more, more comfort there. Moeller, and the runner goes. Likas. Likas throws. Throw gets away. That one just skipped by Jude Taylor, covering second and trickled into the outfield grass. But uh, luckily, no advance there. 
Yeah, now a runner in scoring position with a 3-2 count. We'll see if the runner's off once again. I would expect the runner to be aggressive here. Muller to deliver the full count pitch. Inside. Just missed the inside corner. Likas did a really good job trying to frame that one, but the umpire thought it was just a little too in. Yeah, Muller was probably hoping for some late break there. Not too seen fastball. And get the call, first and second. Both walks. Stepping up for the for the Cavaliers is uh, Drew Emmerich. This season, Emmerich is hitting 375 for the Cavaliers. Leads the team in RBIs with 14. First pitch from Muller there finds the zone. Another first pitch strike. Pitch, outside corner, great spot there by Moeller. I think Moeller might become the face of this pitching staff moving forward for next year. It'll be a workhorse. Yeah, Buckholter threw a really good game on Monday, only allowing one run over multiple innings of work. Kept that game close for a long time. Another good pitch on the outside corner. That one's fouled off. Count remains 0-2. Light swing from the batter there. Just able to fight off the outside pitch. Punch it over the uh, visiting dugout. We'll see what Muller likes to go to with this 0-2 count. Could we see off speed breaking? Yes, we will, but it's going to be a little too low. Low change. I'm okay with that pitch for O2 count. No harm, no foul there. See if he would bite, but did not. And we're back in. One See, and two. Good defense from the Rhode Island commit behind the dish, Danny Lakers. Timeout. Late timeout there. Well, it was already in the lineup, and they. Uh, granted the batter timeout. Interesting decision there by the umpire. Yeah, I feel like usually if the pitcher's midway through their lineup already, though, they won't grant the timeout, but this time they elected to do so. The well, has been pretty gracious so far on those uh, calls in the corners, so we'll take it. More again. That one's going to be ripped over third baseman White Reynolds' head. Definitely. One run will score. Luna is in safely as Emrich cruises into second for the two out double. Yeah, good good relay back in. Only only allows one run to score. But now we got runners on second and third with two down. We'll see if Muller can keep pitching well and work his way out of this one. Stepping up now for the Cavaliers is number two, Jack Mc or excuse me, number 13, Jack McNally. Mahler delivers. First pitch is going to be a little high. Good pitch on the outside corner. Just missed there. Yeah. Pitch in the dirt there. He's going to miss. He remove the count to 2-0. Muller just missing, clearly. Trying to not throw anything too far over the plate, but has to show something in there. McNally with the count in his favor. Another ball, 3-0. TJ, would you give McNally the green light here with uh, two men on? After three straight balls uh, that missed, were pretty close. Uh, I'd, I think I'd give him the green light. If it was a good pitch, right in his spot. Two rounders in the scoring position definitely would take a hit over a walk here. That one's going to miss low. Four pitch walk. Just missed. That one's going to load the bases for the Cavaliers here. Still two down though. You see Sam Houchins. Sorry. Pardon me, 
Carter Salazar, the third baseman, come to the plate, hitting 357 on the air. Salazar, one of the many commits on this team. He's committed to continue his athletic and academic career at UMBC. That was the former home of Gilman coach Mark Lemon, if I'm correct. Wow, did not know that one, Wes. Thank you for that tidbit of information. Played his D1 ball there. First pitch here for Moeller. Salazar is going to find the corner for strike one. Former infielder turned infield coach. Pitch is low and away. Moeller really pounding the outside part of the play here. Some balls, some strikes, but very clear game plan coming to this one. Yeah, pitch count is rising. Big pitch here. 1-1. One, one. On the stretch, curve ball in. Strike two. Big hack and a miss there from Salazar. Muller's going to need one more to get out of this. Sutton delivers. Ball Low. Forward. Nice block again by Lycus. It's been really solid behind the dish. Daniel Lycus, all four years, has been a very, very solid defensive catcher. Really priding himself on his, his blocking ability and his ability to work with the pitchers, which we we will see later in this game. Yeah, Lycus really is the backbone of this team. Four-year varsity man. Good pitch. Randolph from third. Throws it over. Heath. Five threes to get out of the inning. We'll take a short break from GTV and be right back for the bottom of the first. Welcome back to GTV for the bottom of this first inning. So we see Peyton Mamula on the mound warming. Peyton wearing number 23 is 2-0 this year with 15 innings pitched, a 3.2 ERA, and 24 Ks on the season. Average around 88. Committed to Maryland. Sharp hook. Change up. Yeah, one of the few uh, pitchers on the staff that tops out in the 90s. So, all all the games this week, the Hounds will definitely be seeing some velo. Yes, Spalding definitely boasts the hardest and best pitching staff in the MIAA. Hounds will have their work cut out for them. They had a tough time hitting uh, Jake on Monday, who uh, throws in the mid to high 90s. Peyton a bit slower, but doesn't make it any easier. Really hard thrower. Absolutely. I know Coach Sheets had the pitching machine cranked up this week, trying to get the players adjusted to velo fastballs. Pitching machine can only do so much for you. Absolutely, Wes. No arm, no windup, no nothing. Just straight gas coming at you. Yeah, I'm really excited to see this young guy throw as we see Moeller lead off, wearing number 10 and on the mound. Try to get the hound started. First pitch is going to miss just a little bit low. Past the, the long legs of Jake Moeller. Up and delivers. 
going to chop that one over to first base. A little slip, but 3-1. Ground out there for Moeller to start the game. Fastball inside. Couldn't bring in the hands far enough and just chopped it over to the first baseman. Caleb Lawson playing center is going to bat second here for the Hounds. Yeah, when asked about last game, uh, third baseman, White Ranoff, who was in the four hole today, said that he was impressed with the Hounds at bats against Jake Yeager despite the lack of scoring. Not a lot of three pitch strikeouts or the Hounds looking overmatched. So hopefully uh, when they when they uh, experience this velo today, they have a similar uh, at bats. Lawson tried to bunt that first pitch, but pulled back on the ball. Lawson again, lays down the bun. It's gonna hit the home plate and bounce foul. Lawson has an uh, on-base machine so far this year. He's uh, very superstitious about his walk-up music. Goes up in silence uh, since he's been on base so much. That's what he said. Not bonding here. Hook misses high. Caleb with the count in his favor, the platoon advantage in his favor. The 2-1. Curve ball, punch foul onto the lacrosse field. Lacrosse team, TJ, might I mention, is off to a blistering start, 9-2 and two with a win over Severn yesterday. Really excited to watch those guys play. Big game on Saturday against St. Paul's. Absolutely. I think I saw something today that they're 12th in the nation. 12th in the nation. Really impressive stuff. Only one team above them in the MIAA as Lawson grounds a sharp ground ball to second base. Easy play, and he is retired. Back to the lacrosse hounds. Only have BL above them at 5-0 and in the conference. Hounds are sitting at 4-0, and still undefeated. But uh, some big games to come. We've got some home games against Loyola and Calvert Hall, which are on GTV, so make sure to check those out. Like is the catcher stepping up here for the hounds. And in the three hole. He's had a good year at the plate so far. Really good week last week, as we mentioned earlier, against MSJ and St. Paul's. First pitch, he's going to find the zone. That was a fastball right at the knees. The 0 1 here. It's going to be low. This is low and away. Like is looking to kickstart this Hounds offense early in the first year. Crushes that ball to center. Under it. Makes the play to retire the Hounds. Three up, three down. So yeah, Sam Houchins underneath that one. As we go to the top of the second, we'll see Jake Moeller right after this. Welcome back to second inning baseball here at 
with you. Amazing. Gum school. Jake Muller on the bump here. Beautiful Barrett field as we start at the top of the second. Muller to the DH Merritt. Another lot to hear for the Swan Cavaliers. First pitch. Gonna bunt it. Bunted. Oh, collision between Randolph and Moeller there. Not what you want to see on the uh, the bunt defenses that the Hounds so rigorously practice. Yeah, the Hounds pride themselves on good bunt defenses, so uh, coaches will not be happy with that one. Miscommunication there between Randolph, the third baseman, and Moeller, the pitcher of who was charging the lefty bunt. Don't know what play was in order, so can't give a true opinion on whose ball that was, but definitely an in-betweener. First pitch from Moeller. Find the top of the zone. Houchin sitting 318 on the year. Moeller sets. No looks. Delivers the pitch. One and one. And that one's going to just miss the bottom of the zone. Really competitive pitches from Moeller so far. Muller again, the 1-1. One, one. Drilled into center for the single. Bottom of the order gets it going. Kick starts the rally. Outside fastball there. Just put up the middle there by Houchins. Brings up Braden Martin. The leader in runs scored for the team with 18 on the season, hitting 386. Runners on first and second. No one down. Light kick and spin. Just to keep him keep him honest over there at second base. Moeller misses high. As both Heath and Randolph crash with the potential of a bunt. Yeah, I saw him square up, but that one was really high, so he's able just to turn around and Take a ball there. Yeah, corners in. Middle at double play depth. Randolph in that mixed position. Bunted down the third baseline. That's gonna be a real tough play. Randolph fires to first. Not in he time. Is late. A second bunt single of the second inning. Brings the bases loaded once again for the second consecutive inning. Yeah, leadoff batter there. Martin flying down the line. Randolph with a really, really strong arm, just unable to get it there in time. Gonna bring up the bases loaded with no outs. Yeah, we'll see how the Hounds like to play this. Looks like we see the corners in once again, middle back. We'll turn two if they can. Definitely take two outs over the one run. That one is inside and hits him. Luna reaches base once again. Yeah, first pitch fastball, supposed to be in. Little two in and hit him right in the back. Yeah, that's a great baseball player there by Cruz Luna. Not getting out of the way of that one. Wants to see his team score some points. Speaking of points, points match right here. Going for MIAA standings points. Always important with the small league and playoffs, how they always end up. Moeller. That one is drilled in the left field. Nadir Samuel going to try to get this one in quickly. It's ran off the cutoff, man. Scores easily. See the third round of the inning, another single. First five Reese base for Brendan Insko, the Virginia Wesleyan commit. You see Randolph talking to him over, telling him to breathe, calm down. It's not a big deal. They can get these back. Yeah, Muller, a talented pitcher, spalling a talented lineup on the other side, loading their lineup with lefties. Definitely plays to their advantage that Gilman's pitching staff is primarily right-handed. Two notable exceptions, Ben Coleman, Trey Heath. First pitch for Muller, is going to find the zone there. Yeah, nice to see Muller get ahead. First pitch strikes will be key. Staying aggressive, even if they're, they're hitting the balls. At least he's not four-pitch blocking people, except for that one. Yeah, Theo Laughlin at the plate, the 
first base or the left fielder and Davidson commit. That pitch from Mueller there is gonna miss. Gonna bring the count to one one. Still nobody out in the top of the second inning. That one is pop. Gonna be up the center in fielder lost in there. Right center. We'll see a tag. Lawson throws it in. Runner from second tag to third on the fly out there. Now one down. Yeah, still a productive at bat, uh, advancing the runner from second to third. See the catcher Daniel like is calling the first and third plays. We'll see if they, if the coaching staff wants to go with some trickery and do like a little cut play or they'll hold it with the. Uh, trying to prevent the lead from growing any farther. So we will see. Yeah, one of the most fun plays in baseball. First and third play, we'll see if he goes. Not this time. Pitch misses, high and away. Hounds are usually pretty aggressive offensively when they have first and third. It's a good chance to manufacture runs without getting hits. We won't see a steal, but we will see a base hit, hit into left field. Samuel chucks it in. First and second, another run scored. Spalding Tower is up now. Up early, five to nothing in this one. Still the top of the second. It's only one out. Jack McNally to the plate. I'm almost surprised we haven't seen Coach Ren come out and try to talk to his guys. I feel yeah. like he's a very proactive coach. And yeah, TJ, if Coach Ren were to come out, I would think that he would encourage some change-ups low in the zone, maybe some two seams low in the zone. He definitely uh, is a ground ball type coach. That one's going to be yanked. Foul. Samuel has a chance, but bounces off the wall. Yeah, that ball was killed. Nearly made it out of the park, but foul nonetheless, so strike one. Yeah, that left field fence. Only 303, so righties love to pull it down the line. Yeah, back in the day, we would see some balls go over that tall netting protecting Northern Parkway. That one didn't make it that far, but almost made it over the only fence that really matters. Smaller set to deliver the 0-1. Great block by Lycus. Yeah, you would need two hands to count how many times Lycus has done that this game. Been incredible behind the plate. For as big of a guy, he is super agile behind the plate. A lot of good technique, sliding his feet, using the knee pads. Also one of the keys to the Gilman Volleyball program. That pitch is going to find the zone. Great spot there, one and two. Moeller, good to see him staying aggressive after giving up a couple runs. He cannot back down against a lineup like this. They will make you, they will punish you. Misses low once again. Muller's clearly trying to get that change up down low in the zone. Hasn't really been able to get a good feel for that pitch just yet. First and second here for the Cavaliers. Still one out. Muller sets. 2-2. Two, two. Delivers. Pitch is pulled foul. Another one yanked foul. Yeah, he's really on time with that fastball. I would not be surprised if Moeller goes with something different on this one. Needs to be able to spot a breaking ball here and hopefully get a swing and miss or a ground ball double play. Huh? Yeah, when you see a hitter that early on a fastball and hitting it that well, you cannot throw another one over the middle of the plate. Good Here's change the up there. Change up, yeah. Possible Low. double play here. Can't turn two. Oh, I'm fake. Great. Got him in a rundown. Rundown between home and third. He's going to be safe after a seemingly missed tag there. Yeah, great play by the second baseman, Chris Rangarajaran, at second. But uh, wasn't able to get that second out. Ultimately, still get one. No run score. Yeah. Would have liked to get them in that rundown. Seemed very confident on the tag. I thought he got him, but the umpires disagreed. He ducked below the 
Buffalo tag. Yeah, I'm not sure. Only two people know the real outcome of that one. Ball here. Yo, oh, fastball. Popped up. It's going to be over the net and into the fans. Oh, hit someone's hand as they try to go up and catch it. Yeah, TJ, I'd really like to get a ball back here, but they keep missing us. Fortunately, it looks like everyone's okay over there in the spotting parent section. No broken hands. Just maybe a broken, bruised ego after that. <laughs> Hit him right in the hand. <laughs> Mauler. Set for the 0 1. Runner goes. See, Lycus. On fake, smart note. No, uh, no throw. He wasn't going to get him even with the perfect throw. Surprised the Cavaliers waited this long to run with the first and third. I feel like a lot of teams in high school baseball, and especially the MIAA, are very aggressive base runners. Yeah, well, with the way that they've been hitting, I don't think they want to get into any outs. They're really confident in their bats, so they don't want to make any outs in the base pass. Two runners in scoring position here. Lefty hits it foul. Carver Salazar playing third base. Another foul ball for him off to the to the right side, our right side. Muller ahead in the count. The one and two. Misses up and in. Two's across the board. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Second inning, two, TJ. Wow. Muller misses right above the head of Salazar. Unfazed, didn't even try to move out of the way. Yeah, that shows you how well they're seeing this ball. Full count offering on the way for Muller. Salazar, Swing and a miss. Is great pitch by Muller, his first K of the day. Sends him down as we will be back for the bottom of the second inning, Hounds down 5-0. All right, Mr. Welcome back to Barrett Field here. Hounds down 5 nothing, And uh, third baseman Wyatt Randolph is actually leading off this inning. And something interesting, Wesley, he told me that every time he doesn't sleep well the night before a game, he plays really good. Did he sleep well last night? I didn't see him today, so I wish I knew. Sharp ground ball is going to find the gap between second or shortstop and third base. Great piece of hitting there by Randolph, high exit Velo. I'm gonna attribute that one to the great choice on the walk of song, the Beach Boys classic. Love that from Randy. Yeah, why Randolph has some of the highest exit velocity on this team coming off the bat. Swings hard and hits the ball hard. Bang now, 
Uh, Jude Taylor. Playing shortstop today. The OO. Up and in. Curve ball that didn't curve enough. Didn't break. Started at the head and stayed at the head there. Taylor. Randolph off. Hit and run there. Yeah, hit and run. Fouled off. Taylor does a good job just to get a piece of that one. Yeah, Coach Sheets and the, the entire coaching staff preaches just putting bat on the ball and hit and run. It doesn't matter if it goes foul, but would they'd rather you hit it and it go foul than swing at a ball in the dirt and strike out, throw out. Yeah, Randolph might be a bigger guy, but he's got some sneaky speed. He definitely can run the bases. Pickoff move there. Randolph dives back in safely. Yeah, big guy, but he can definitely move around the bases when you need him to. Would not want him chasing me. There he goes. Misses on the hit and run, and he gets in there. Yeah, throw, really strong throw from the catcher there, but pulled, him off, pulled the uh, second baseman off the bag. Yeah, uh, Brendan Insko was not able to get over there in time. Got a feeling that if he got there a little bit early, they might have been able to nab Randolph on the steal. But uh, fortunately, it works out for the Hounds. Runner in scoring position. Taylor really needs to get him over here. Just do a job here. And ground ball even to the right side. That is curve a ball beautiful curveball right down the plate. Tight break there. Just locked him up. Yeah, when you throw uh, low 90s and then you've got that hook, it's, it's really hard for high school hitters to catch up to. Stepping up for the Hounds here. The right fielder, Toby Rosenman. Fun fact here, Toby Rosenman actually has a Gavin Sheets leg guard in White Sox colors with Sheets across the band. So he's going to pop that one up. Yeah, well, last time I checked, as Rosenman flies out to the center fielder, Gavin Sheets is the leading hitter on the White Sox this season. White Sox, only two wins, not doing too well, but Gavin Sheets has been playing well, performing, uh, obviously, Coach Larry Sheets' his son, so uh, happy for that, the Gilman grad. Absolutely, Wes. We'll look for him to have a good year, represent Gilman well. Two homers, I believe, as of last night. Seven up here for the Hounds. Number four, Chris Rangarajan playing second base in this one. The OO. Chris checks a swing, but the pitch is a strike on the call. Good spot there for an OO pitch. Chris is a great contact hitter. I try to put this between the infield and outfield. That one's going to miss just outside. Fastball. <laughs> yeah, Memula couldn't get that one really close. Down even here, two outs. Randolph big lead. Krish offers at it. Randolph caught no man's land, but he is safe. Safe again. Gets back with the slide back to second. Really awkward tag there. Had to like reach around and try to put the tag on blind behind him. Yeah, but we've really gotten to see the arm of Jack McNally from behind the plate. That, that kid's got a cannon. Spotting. Produces sneakily good catchers. Not necessarily the biggest names in the league, but they're solid back there. Another good take by Rangarajan. Seen it well. Two is across the board again. Pick Pick off. off move. Little backside turn. Really trying to keep Randolph close after he stole second earlier in the couple at bats ago. The pitch is waved at and missed. Another good breaking ball there. Second strikeout of the inning sends the Hounds down. Be back for the top of the third after this.
Welcome back here. Moeller set to fire the OO. Fastball is going to find the zone right at the belt. Carson Merritt leads off this inning as he did the second. Walked that time and scored. We'll see how he does. Jake Moeller delivers again. That one's going to be low. Picked off the dirt by catcher Danny Likas. Moeller again. Misses outside. Moeller's pitch count is steadily ticking up. Moeller again here. That, that ball is hammered into right. Tubby Rosenman's going to get under it, though. Able to track that one down for the first out of the inning. Yeah, great positioning there by Rosenman. We're in the right place at the right time. Coach Wolf loves to get the outfield in position. He knows the tendencies of seemingly everyone in the MIAA. I don't really know how he does it. Yeah, very connected man. Knows a lot of MIAA baseball players. Yeah, absolutely, Wes. He, I, he either knows everyone or he watches hours of film every night. Could be both. <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised if it's both, actually. Mulder here, the OO. One out to start this one. Sam Houchins, the center fielder, got a single in his first at bat. That one's going to be popped up to center, left center gap, but center fielder Caleb Boston is going to track that one down. Yeah, Hounds are happy with those lazy flyouts, but fortunately, here comes the turn of the order. Braden Martin, one for two on the day with a single on the ground out. Lefty heavy, top of the order. See how they do against Jake Muller. Tries to bunt it again. Pulls back, though. Yeah, Spalding's uh, really been heavy on the bunting so far this game. And my double-A is known for the small ball, but Spalding, despite their big hitters, has still been playing it. Looked good to me, but called a ball. Yeah, that pitch missed. Looked good all the way, but clearly the umpire did not think so. Jake Muller behind the count. Delivers. That one's not going to find the zone either. Low and in looked. Yeah, down, down 3 0. Quick in this at bat. Let's see if Moeller can uh, bounce back here. That's it's the outside corner. Even on 3 0, Moeller's still shooting for the corners. Right. Trying to knock that paint off. Don't want to leave anything right down the middle in case the coach gives him the green light. That one's going to be down the middle. and That one was foul. killed. These Spalding uh, players certainly have some raw, raw power. A lot of hard foul balls. We'll see if Muller has the confidence to go to something off speed or breaking on this 3-2 count. Muller delivers. Nice ball fouled foul the back. other direction. Watch out lacrosse hounds. That's why they wear the helmets, DJ. <laughs> Foul balls. They're getting peppered back there today. Can't think of any other reason. Not at all. Not a very physical sport. <laughs> Muller here, full count, ball four, walk. Martin's going to maybe try to take second here. Aggressive base running. Flying down the line on that ball, ball four as the pitch gets past Lycus. Yeah, that's, that's great effort intensity by Braden Martin. One of the few pitches this game we'll see go by Likas. He is really good back there, as we've mentioned before. No uh, no pass balls yet this game. Two all hitters stepping up. This is Cruz Luna. Luna's had a great game so far. Doesn't have a hit yet, but a walk and got hit earlier in uh, the first two innings. Third at bat, third inning. Spawning hitters are definitely getting their reps in today. That ball is going to miss. Muller falls behind in the count again. 2 0. Ump's not giving him anything extra. Not at all. Very, it seems like a generous zone at times and then also really tight at other times. Typical. Yeah, in the, in the first, uh, first game he was getting that outside corner. First inning he was getting that outside corner call, but got it there, but did not get it the pitch before. <laughs> Muller 
Moeller's been really successful when he's been working from an 0-1 count, less so uh, when he gets behind these hitters. Big off move. Probably a B move there, not really trying to get him. Three one here. Mullers sends it off and runners off. Lycus throws down. Strike on the pitch will make it three two. Runner goes. Nabs the base. Cruz Luna now uh, with running in scoring position. Count in his fi favor. Mauler delivers the full count offering. Ball inside. That ball was a little closer than Luna made it look. Yeah, I thought that was going to hit him on that, that bare elbow there. You see a lot of guys wear these Evo Shield pads in case someone catches, catches it on the elbow, but he was not wearing one and almost caught him. Those, those hurt. Yeah, wore one uh, the inning prior. He's got like an Anthony Rizzo-like stance where he's definitely lefty uh, close to the plate. Strike there on the breaking pitch. This is going to be Brennan I in Insco batting here. He's going to fall behind 0 and 1. Insco 394 on the year. Muller delivers. Strike two on the inside part of the plate. Some of the some groans there from these folding parents did not really like that call on the inside half of the plate. Look like he got there. Muller 0 2. Time called by Insko. Fair time call there. Muller not in the lineup as the other time out. He was halfway through his delivery. The 0 2 here. Muller sets. Two looks over at second base. Fires. Good pitch in the dirt. Right under Lycus. Will he get to first? And he does. Drop third strike, and uh, Lycus couldn't find it there. Thought it went, it skipped back to the bricks, but in reality, it just spawned at home plate. That's an unfortunate break after Muller threw some great pitches during that at bat. Got the K, but Insko still reaches base. Gonna be a four out inning here for the Hounds. Not something you see a lot. Yeah, after two easy fly out to start this inning. It's been tough. Foul ball straight back. Just missed that first offering there. Yeah, Theo Laughlin hitting 292 on the season. Yet another lefty bat here. That, that ball is ripped. hammered to Rosenband and right. Gets a good jump on it, plays it well, and gets it in. Two runs will still score as the Cavs have runners at the corners with two outs. All their work happening with two outs. Yeah, really good like two out approaches, I want to say, from the Cavaliers. Not trying to do too much, just do their job and move it over to the next guy. Hounds still not thinking about making a pitching change. Would like to see Moeller get through three. A little thin on pitching. Yeah, with the new schedule change. Pitching is definitely a necessity. You need a lot of guys that can eat up innings, and all year that has been one of the the issues that the Hounds have had as that first pitch misses. Yeah, it definitely gives a unique challenge to these coaching staffs, but I do like this new schedule. It um, provides a good opportunity where each team gets to see uh, another team three times during a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, alternating home and away games, which uh, gives a good chance. Don't, uh, don't get to see one team's ace multiple times in a season, get to see him once, get to see uh, all the different pitchers that each team has to offer. And I think it's a really exciting change for the MIAA. Yeah, like you were saying, Wes, last year and in years past, uh, you just play a team one game home, one game away, and you could theoretically see their, their, I don't know, Vandy commit twice a year is throwing 99 by you, and you don't, you don't really have a chance. But now... You can see, you got to see the depth of the teams and see how they handle themselves in high pressure situations like this one. Yeah, and baseball really is a team sport. You shouldn't just be trying out your one guy and uh, winning that way. You need, need some pitching depth, and uh, that's what this league requires. 
Mahler's going to step off there. See, he's behind the count. Third and one. Second, second base open. Spalding doesn't look like it will get too aggressive. Pickoff move from Moeller there. Moeller thinks otherwise. Trey, he's getting the ball back quick with the runner on third. Not trying to let up any easy bases. He's going to find the zone there, Moeller. Good pitch at the top of the zone. Doesn't hit his mark. An underrated thing of baseball. The batter thinks it's a ball, but it's actually a strike, and they have to walk back. Yeah, it's the best when they ring him up on it, but that was strike two, and that one hits him. Second hit by pitch of the game for Moeller as Drew Emmerich is having a pretty uh, pretty good game, two for two with a hit by pitch. Yeah, that's that's one you do not like to see with a competitive count and uh, just gives a free base there. Still... No yeah. movement from the Gilman coaching staff to calm down Mueller, talk to him, talk to the defense. Yeah, really unfortunate. If you remember back to Insko's at bat on the strikeout and drop third strike, these two runs could have been avoided and any future damage this inning. Mueller with the OO offering, finds the bottom of the zone. Moeller again. That one's going to be lined up the middle, but uh, Lawson's going to track that one down and put it away for the third out. As we will go to the break for the bottom of the third, 7-0 in favor of the Cavs. Hounds looking to answer. Welcome back here to Barrett Field as a uh, junior, Trey Heath, stepping up. And uh, during the break, made an observation about these new spawning uniforms. The new spawning uniforms, uh, they're interesting. The white to black gradient with the red lettering is not my personal favorite, especially with the black pants. But <laughs> Yeah, it's, I'm a classic guy. I like the pinstripes. I like the white pants, but... They definitely, uh, the new, uh, new MIAA uniform concepts, these teams have uh, four or five different alternate uniforms. Gilman uh, showcasing their gray and blue tops, white pants. So uh, Spalding's uh, got this, this one in their bag. <laughs> Trey ahead in the count here, 2-0. That one's going to find the zone at the knees. Good pitch by Mamula. Low pitch count to start this inning, only at 24 pitches. Good fastball at the knees from Manuel there. Trey's going to lay one bunt. Hard bunt back to Manuel. 
Good fielding. Retires him one to three. Swatting will throw it around. Not the best location for a bun if you could pick and choose, but with the velo coming at you, sometimes you just gotta put the bat out there and put it on the ground somewhere. This is gonna be the uh, the nine hole hitter, Nadir Samuel. The first pitch is gonna miss low and skip by the catcher there. Samuel steps in. Second pitch of the at bat here. Fastball. Swings over top of it. 1-1. One, one. And one out. Hounds are looking to score their first run. Wouldn't be surprised if we saw a breaking pitch here. It's been playing very good off the fastball today. Just another fastball right by him. Change up. Pardon me. Yeah, Manuel is definitely, his, all of his pitches play really well off each other. And yeah, the, the classic righty build, but it is really effective and great pitch in the dirt there. Gets uh, Samuel chasing. Throw by McNally, retires him. Two down here in the bottom of the third inning. Yeah, Hounds are going to have a really tough time, especially with Mamulus low pitch count scoring some runs here. He is dialed in. Lead off batter, Jake Muller. He grounded out the first to lead off the Hounds bats. Yeah, Muller was on time with it to start this inning, or to start this game. See how he is in this one. Give me at the knees. It's going to be a college strike there. Yeah, that ball's got some really good uh, left to right movement on it as well. Not a straight fastball. That one's going to miss away. So he lost a bit of grip there. 1-1. One, one. Something interesting about the Hounds lineup. First two hitters and the last two hitters are the only lefties. So surrounding the middle with lefties to keep, keep them honest. The lead off and the second lead off, as they say. Jake Muller heading the count here, two and one. Muller's seen the ball really well these days. Emil offers fastball. Gets a piece. That also, one. unfortunately, gets a piece of McNally. Yeah. I think that hit uh, McNally's thigh, like right above the knee pad. Yeah, TJ, as a former catcher, how does that feel? That one does not feel good. That's it's gonna be a bruise for a couple of days. Probably might be sore coming out of bed tomorrow morning. Yeah, really nice gesture. The ump uh, taking the time to talk to Manuel, giving McNally a chance to get a breather. Yeah, no padding on the thighs. Those knee pads stop just above the knee when you're squatted down, as the catcher often is. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely not my thing, but uh, catchers are a different breed. Strike three there on Moeller. Set, freezes him. Sets him down looking. Third strike out of the game for Mamula as we head to the top of the fourth.
Welcome back to Greyhound TV. I'm Wesley Kruger alongside TJ Ryder as we begin the top of the fourth inning. New uh, pitching change for the Gilman Greyhounds as Toby Rosenband takes the mound uh, following Jake Muller's three-inning stint with five earned runs allowed, seven total runs. Uh, command was a bit of an issue, six walks, two hit-by-pitches, six hits allowed, and two strikeouts on the day. Pitch count got too high for him to stay in this game, 89 pitches. Rosenbands. First pitch here against Salazar. He's going to miss inside. Yeah, Rosenband high 70s. Some uh, good good off speed leads on the curve. Yeah, good breaking ball from Rosenband here. So we'll see it early and often, I assume. That one's going to miss low. Yeah, fastball. Thought it might have painted the bottom of the zone, but um, deems it's too low. Yeah, as you were saying, Wes Muller just could not keep his pitch count down. So couldn't go as deep as. I think he would have wanted, and the coaching staff also would have wanted. Yeah, Muller had some success against Car Carver Salazar, 0 uh, for 2 on the day with the ground up and strikeout. We'll see if there's a man can keep that up. Misses up and in. Four, Four pitch. pitch walk. Don't like to see that out of your new pitcher, but uh, Toby hopefully will be able to regain some control. Yeah, high school baseball is always tough when you saw Rosenban playing right field, so not a lot of time to warm up, just warming up in between innings essentially. Yeah, it's really it's really uh, tough to get heated up in a hurry, especially when you don't know if you're next in line. You don't know if you're playing right field for seven innings. You just it's hard it's hard to prepare. Um, but Rosenband will I try to take game. it in stride as that one is ripped down the line. But uh, he's gonna go foul. Uh, Trey Heath moved to right field, and uh, Jake Mole moved to first on this pitching change. So the batting order will remain the same. Hounds not electing for a DH. Rarely, the Hounds love pitchers that can hit. I think rarely did they, do they ever DH unless yeah. they have Yo on the mound, such as Nick Cruz. Although he has been getting some at bats this year. Yeah, Cruz, Cruz can hit the ball around. I would not be surprised if they let him uh, pitch and hit. Two way player, Nick Cruz, Shoyotani, comps. Do you see it? I can see it. Another foul ball straight back here. Another PO, former PO getting hit, uh, getting at bats, Ben Coleman. Yeah, yeah. So maybe Gilman, Gilman moving away from the PO model. Yeah, we'll see if we see Coleman or, or Heath on the mound today with the lefty heavy lineup. Pitching the dirt, good block by Lycus. Rosenband ahead in the count, one and two. Runner on first base here, no one out in the top of the fourth inning. Rosenman. Yeah, B move there by Rosenman. <laughs> Trying to keep him honest over there. A little bit slower of a delivery than Moeller, so you just got to really get your looks down, get your moves out, keep him close. Yeah, slide step there on the curve, misses outside. Count comes even, two and two. Yeah, sometimes you see Rosenman with the Kershaw-esque delivery. Elects for the slide step a lot out of the stretch. Fastball in the dirt. Good block by Lycus. Full count here. Rosenban battling after being up 0-2. 3-2. Wow. He looked... Dead in his rights to me. Yeah, from this angle, he looked toast over there. Really good move by Rosenman. Saw him sleeping. Yeah, Spalding's lucky they got that call because I don't know. Runner goes. Runner's off, and it's ball, ball four. four. Second consecutive walk for Rosenman. Rosenman not having the start that the coaching staff wanted here. Two early walks. Yeah, the Hounds uh, coaching staff really emphasizes the freebie battle, which is walks, errors, uh, of that sort. And the Hounds are certainly losing that. Eight walks, two hit by pitch um, from these first two pitchers. Spalding, uh, no walks, no hit by pitch. Rosenman's going to find the outside corner there for the breaking ball. Nine hole. Sam Houchins, single and a fly out. This is the man that Rosenband wants here, the nine-hole batter, before he gets to the top of the order. 
Yeah, it only gets tougher. And Under the glove of Moeller. Up the line. Hutchins will turn for a second. One run in. As a one RBI double for Houchins out of the nine hole. Sharp ground ball there. Right in between Moeller and the first base bag. Couldn't get his glove down and reach it quick enough and scooted by him. So we'll see Braden Martin at the plate. Came into the day at 386. That is surely went up. First fourth at bat. Fourth inning. Rosenbaum here, trying to bottle back after an early run. Fastball inside, it's gonna miss. Back smarting off the plate there. The uh, Rosenbaum sets the 1-0. The ball is hit sharply up the middle. It'll score two as Martin gets the ribby. That'll put the score to 10 nothing. Spawning Cavaliers. Uh, Rosenband's just giving up some sharply hit balls and two walks, which is not usually a recipe for success. Yeah, walks have been killer. And out of those walks, a lot of them have scored. We've seen three walks in the first, walk in the second, Two walks, then two walks again. First pitch from Rosenman misses low. Well, and of those ten walks, TJ, seven of them have scored as well as a hit by pitch scoring. So that's really been the killer for the Hounds thus far. Strike there from Rosenman. And yeah, Wes, I think that really emphasizes what you're saying about the the freebie battle. Like if you can limit the amount of free passes you give up, you'll definitely be in a much better position to to win a ball game. Yeah, the Hounds really really do preach control in their in their pitching staff. So we see a heavily shifted outfield. No shift in the infield. Big swing and a miss there. Good pitch low in the zone. Luna does not have an official at bat, although he does have three runs scored, still at five thirty six on the season, leading the team. That one is gonna be. killed. Can Lawson get there? He can. Sliding catch from Lawson. What a play by the center fielder. Robs Luna of his first hit of the day. Could be the momentum shift the Hounds need. Great sliding catch there from Lawson. You know, Wes, I, you played some outfield in your days, and you are known for those sliding catches. Yeah, it's, it's a fun one. I was always trying to get on Sports Center on the JV field. Fortunately, didn't have any cameras over there. Brennan Insko stepping up here. Slide step by Rosenban, dusts him off. First, and th or, or excuse me, runner on first here. Brennan is one for three on the day. As that one is poked foul. Yeah, check, try to check his swing there. Caught the hands, but luckily for the batter that the ball trickled foul. Count even here, one and one after the check swing foul ball. That one is drilled between the five six hole. It's gonna find a hole. Gonna be another single for the Cavaliers here. Rosenban, still only with one out here. As Laughlin steps up to the plate, all but one have reached in this inning. Spalding has scored in each inning. One, four, two, three. It's going to be, as you're saying, Laughlin stepping up. He's had a good game so far. As a Mandalore is going to be away for ball one. See Coach Sheets making substitution here. Noah Talley is going to be in at a third base. I think they're going to have Wyatt Randolph warm up the pitch. And oh. 
Right we now. will see them switch back. Coach Sheets didn't look super happy with something. Yeah, I no Italian not usually a third baseman, so I was kind of surprised to see that move. But no, definitely an infielder. Usually more of a middle infielder, but um, might have been getting some practice time at third base. Randolph does seem to be the next logical guy to pitch. Yeah, Rising Man's gonna find the zone there. Strike one. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're not gonna go to a lefty, Randolph has to be your guy in this situation. Yeah, hard throwing righty. So the senior, third baseman, hits it hard. Rosenman ahead of the count again. One and two. Runners on first and second here with one out. One look to second. Pitches away. That popped one is up. Popped up in the Bermuda Triangle area. It is caught. That's a tough play. Great yeah. play by Chris Ranger Rajron. Saw the, the right fielder Trey there. Took a huge couple steps back, which is supposed to drop step, but that looked like a lot to me. And yeah. Right field, uh, has been known to be the hardest position in the MIAA when playing at Barrett Field. Really tough view of the sun uh, during these afternoon and night games with the sun setting. Very, very tough angles during practice and uh, during the games. Sun is covered up a little bit today, but. Yeah, I think also the wind. It's pretty breezy today with the wind blowing from right to left. Rosenbad with two down delivers the yellow fastball. It's going to be for a strike. Good pitch there by Rosenbad. Hook can't land, stays up. Yeah, started it one at him to try to get it to break over the middle. But uh, didn't break enough. It's a little more pronation needed. As Rosenban, good pitch, low and away, gets the swing. Rosenban ahead in the count here, one and two, two down. Hounds looking to stop the damage. That one's gonna miss. Gonna move the count to even. Rosenman delivers. Ball in the dirt again. Three and two. Yeah, Rosenman has had some difficulty finishing at bats. He's been ahead in the count a couple times and then lost it and moved it to full counts or counts where the batter's at an advantage. Yeah, as this is the pinch hitter, Oliver Robinson, with a 3 2 count. That one is drilled into left center. One run's definitely going to score. They're going to stop everyone at third base. Lawson jogs in, tosses it. Another run across in this inning, and that'll move the score to 11 0 in favor of the Spalding Cavaliers. It's going to be the catcher. Jack McNally stepping up here with two down in the top of the fourth inning. Dagulikas calling the first and third play here. We'll see if they are a little more aggressive than they were the last time. First pitch grounded third base. That's going to be Randolph. She's going to take the easy way to second. Put an end to the inning. Cavs 11, Hounds 0. Bottom of the fourth, we go.
Back to Greyhound TV. I'm Wesley Krieger alongside TJ Ryder as we bring you the bottom of the fourth action. Caleb Lawson will lead off this one in the two hole. TJ, uh, I heard you had some breaking news to bring yeah, to the broadcast. Absolutely. The newest interscholastic sport at Gilman, Whoa. Ultimate Frisbee, took a huge win 13 2 on senior night. So hopefully there was a lot of people supporting the senior class. How about those guys? Yeah, ultimate frisbee, such a physical and competitive sport. It's always good to see a, a hard fought win. Can we get a round of applause? Great job, frisbee. <laughs> Great job, frisbee hounds. Uh, Lawson's gonna foul off the first pitch down the first base line. Beautifully done as this game is unfortunately 11-0. Count goes to 0-1 on Lawson, the two hitter. Gonna be a ball away. The count moves to even one and one. The one one. It's gonna be a ball down. Drifted a little too hard, I think. Put in the dirt. Yeah, Peyton yet to walk anyone this game. Lawson trying to become the first. Lawson's an on base, on on base machine. Yeah, he's got some sneaky power in that bat too. Cat eight, I believe. Looks like it to me. That one's gonna be popped up center fielder. Just gonna get a hold on that one, put it away for the first out of the inning. Daniel Ike is stepping up. Rhode Island commit. I heard there were rumors last year that he might end up playing third base in college. Any Whoa. Any notion on that, Wes? I have I have not heard that one. I'm not I can't discredit those rumors, but like it's been a really solid catcher for the Hounds and definitely valuable to the team. But uh, D1 level, only the best, the best uh, make it behind the backstop. Although uh, I think Danny Dudley's potential when we uh, played together back in uh, travel ball way back when he he was a third baseman, first baseman, athletic guy can move all over. So uh, I think he could succeed there. First pitch there to like this is a strike. But, uh, yeah, last year in a couple out-of-conference games, he was getting some reps at third base. He's going to pop that one up. The right fielder is going to run and snag that one to uh, put Likas away there. Randolph, the only Greyhound with a hit this game. He's bringing the good vibrations. Nice pun there, Wes. Yeah, Randolph hit earlier in this game, smoked one to the uh, left side of the airfield. Stole a base, too. First pitch up in the zone. Yeah, hard fastball up there. Good good take by Randolph. Yeah, those fastballs creeping up you hard in the zone are hard to lay off, but really good out of there. A lot more discipline this year than last year for Randolph. Good eye. Yeah, these two pitches really complement each other well. Change up misses low. Randolph able to take both. Very confident in his approach. See the little bat waggle from the windup. Delivers. That one's going to be a strike. Paints the outside corner. Why Randolph Rhodes commit. So we'll look forward to watching him play next year. Yeah. yeah great school and down in Tennessee. Yeah. Really good curveball there. That one just broke right across the middle and froze Randolph there. 2-2, two, two. two outs, Hounds down 11. Yeah, we'll see which of the three it is. Hard fastball Randolph gets on time. Fouls yeah. it right back. Yeah, right back at us. Thank goodness for that net. Could have taken out our cameraman, freshman Cyrus Ballow. Randolph here, 2-2. Curveball is going to miss away. Yeah, Cyrus is learning the uh, camera responsibilities, so. That he is, but we appreciate him nonetheless. Foul Hard away. cut. Randolph's on his day, seeing the ball really well. This is not easy at bat for anyone. 
really battling here. Seeing good pitches, fouling off good pitches too. We'll see if he can win this battle here. 3 2. Strike. Really good pitch on the outside corner. Yeah, I think. I that, think Randolph knew that one. Yeah, he did. Just shook his head. Nothing you can do as uh, we end the fourth. Still 11 0 as the Cavs get one more swing at it. Welcome back here to some more Gilman baseball action as the Spalding Cavaliers lead this one 11 to nothing. That they do, TJ. Hounds are going to need to score uh, two runs this inning if they want to keep it going down 11-0, and that will be no easy task against Peyton Medulla, the Maryland commit. Yeah, Hounds have had a tough go of it today. Can't really get anything going against a really solid pitcher. Rosenbaum's first pitch is going to find the zone here. Yeah, Rosenbaum's goal this inning is just going to be throw some strikes, limit the walks, try to force some soft contact. Hard swing there. Uh, it's going to be the pinch hitter Chase Taylor down 0-2. Yeah, another lefty. Spalding's got a plethora of these guys. Hits the outside corner. Strike out there for Rosenban. Right on the black, that ball cut back. Nice action on the fastball. Rosenban gets the first one. It's going to be another pinch hitter here for the Cavaliers. This is the one that's going to be Noah Vasey. Yeah, Spalding uh, using their big bench. A lot of kids at that school, a lot of players on the team. It's a nubber to uh, Rosenban. Fields it, records the out. Two quick ones. PFPs for Rosenban there. Spalding might just be the biggest school in the MIAA. I think so, Wes. Co-ed, and they have, they have a lot of bodies there. It's going to be the third pinch hitter of the inning, uh, Jacob Ruiz. Typically an outfielder, but today he's coming off the bench, pinch hitting. Rosenman's been efficient in this inning. First offering. Nice strike. strike to Seamer, bottom of the zone. Yeah, the uh, the baseball coaching staff loves two Seamers as opposed to four Seamers. Try to get some late movement. That one's going to be popped up. Big league pop up out to left as Samuel collects it. Third out of the inning. Great pitching by Rosenman. One, two, three. Has to be head to the bottom of the fifth.
Three, Welcome two, back to Greyhound TV. I'm Wesley Krieger alongside TJ Ryder for the bottom of the fifth one. Potentially our last inning. Hopefully not, though. Hounds are down 11-0. Gonna need to. Ben Komen leading off the inning. Yeah, Pitcher, outfielder. Looks like it's gonna be a couple of pinch hitters for the Hounds. Ben coming up right now and uh, Noah Talley. We almost saw him go into the field, but he looks like he's gonna get in that bat. Yeah, Noah Talley. Great kid, Junior. Love to see both these guys get hits. Ben Coleman prefers the old school all-star helmets to the uh, newer Under Armour ones that have been provided. Well, we'll see if it pays off. Fashion doesn't matter in baseball, hits do. Great observation there, Wes. Coleman steps in. Nice cut to the right side. First pitch to right for field. Coleman. Coleman with a second hit of the game, the pinch hitter. Maybe this uh, team needs to get him somewhere at bats. Absolutely, West Ben Coleman's swings early and often there. One pitch, one ball in play, one hit. Got the pitch he was looking for, I guess, and uh, poked it the other way. What a great walk-up song, Heartless, no tally. First pitch, it's going to be a strike at the bottom of the zone. Now with Tally looking to do damage here. Yeah, Payton's really pounding the zone. All zeros thus far. He's trying to get some, some weak contact or blow, blow the fastball by him. Get out of this one with as low pitch count as possible. That one's going to miss away. Count moves to even, 1-1. One one. Payton out of the stretch for one of the few times today. Delivers and it's going to miss low and away. Yeah, sometimes TJ, that transition to the stretch can uh, mess up the rhythm of pitchers. I'm not saying it is here. Payton, very talented pitcher, but uh, sometimes all you need is one base runner and uh, you can start to rattle the pitcher a little bit, try to get some pressure on him. Tally fouls it off. A little late on that one. A little late, I think. Carmen on the hands. Fouled it off. Spinner over to the visiting dugout there. Yeah, if I were Tally, I would expect the fastball here. Never know, but I would, if, uh, if you're that late on an inside pitch, that's where I would go. One for the curveball, and Tally's going to swing over top of it. Well, that is why he is pitching. I'm not. Great pitch there, outside corner. Tough A-B for Tally. Cohen remains on first. Jackson Cheatham stepping up. He has been the uh, the uh, speed guy, I think. The speed specialist, he's, you he's could say. He's been the speed guy for, for four years. Yeah. Three years, pardon me. Only a junior. Played Wanted to play JV last year just so he could get more at-bats and reps as opposed to just being the, uh, the runner for varsity. Respect that choice for the love of the game. Absolutely. We'll see if he can get something going here. Good contact, but pulls that one foul. Jackson also a star on the football field. We look forward to seeing him play next fall. Yeah, I think there's a good chance you're going to see this guy uh, after the high school level on, uh, on the football field. Really talented player. Count is one and one here. One down. Curveball is going to be a little high there. Really good pitch, a little higher than he would have liked it. But Cheatham did a good job laying off of that one. <laughs> Two one offering, fastball by Jackson Cheatham. There, there's the velocity that we have been talking about. Yeah, after seeing that curveball, I imagine it is really tough to get a good swing on that fastball. Absolutely, the pitches just complement each other so well. Really hard to predict and react even when the ball's coming in hot. Yeah, really good, uh, really good placement. Uh, Peyton's been working on the outside corner a lot during this game. Full count here. Jackson Cheatham with one down in the bottom of the fifth inning. Don't think we'll see a steal here. 
Need two runs. Fastball popped back. Popped back. Onto the football field. Jackson so dearly loves that field. <laughs> or he hates it during the summer workouts, we've heard. Rigorous. Yeah. Heard rigorous they're workouts. grueling. Yeah. That coaching staff does not take it easy on those guys. Not at all. 3 2 offering again. It's going to be ball four. Great layoff there by Jackson Cheatham. Hounds will get two base runners on the first time all game. So you see Jake Newberger, the catcher, get his first at bat of the day. He's a lefty. Maybe he'll get a better view of uh, breaking pitches from Peyton. Yeah, Jake Newberger was impressive during fall workouts. He worked hard over the summer and really improved his batting and I think his defense as well. So we'll look for him to take over the helm behind the plate next year. Yeah, some uh, big shoes to fill with uh, Likes' departure, but no doubt Newberger will do a good job. The first pitch was fouled off behind by Newberger. The 0-1 fastball is going to be right by him. A little late on that swing. Yeah, it looked like he was guessing something different. Caught, uh, caught guessing and uh, just put up a hack. Newberger down 0-2 here. Gonna chop that one the other way. Third base. Not gonna be able to turn the double play. Safe at first. Good uh good hustle down the line by Newberger and uh good job just to put that one in play with two strikes. Caught him in on the hands a little bit and grounded to third, but Newberger's speed blazing down the line beat out the double play there. Yeah, Samuel up to the plate. Samuel here with two outs. Need a run on the board. Need two runs on the board. First pitch is going to be chopped over to first base. First baseman will take him itself. And uh, that'll, do that'll it. end the game, yeah. Final score, 11-0 in favor of the Archbishop Spalding Cavaliers over the Gilman Greyhounds. Uh, I'm Isaac Kruger alongside TJ Ryder. Thank you so much for listening to our GTV broadcast, and uh, see you next time.